Okay, as a summary, we will look at the methods again. Okay, the first method we can pick is called titration. Titration, it must usually be acid and alkali titration. Okay, acid alkali titration. When do I choose this? Group 1 salt. Okay, if the salt is soluble and is group 1, or group 2 must be calcium and below. Okay, because calcium and below, the calcium hydroxide, barium hydroxide, these are alkali. Magnesium hydroxide is a base. Okay, magnesium is above calcium, it's a base. Okay, so if the salt is a calcium and below salt or group 1 salt, pick titration. So sodium sulfate, because sodium is group 1, the method to do is titration. Okay, and this is our write-out, right? Titrate sulfuric acid with sodium hydroxide, okay, with the known concentration. Okay, wash both pipette and burette with distilled water and then rinse it with the respective reagents. Then pipette the sodium hydroxide into the conical flask, two to three drops of indicator. Okay, and then what color change is your indicator? Please know this. You have to memorize this. Okay, metal orange turns yellow in alkali, red in acid, and your end point. Right? The picture is here. Okay, and then after that, fill up the burette with the acid and then add it drop by drop into the conical flask while you swirl and mix. Okay, stop when metal orange turns from yellow to end point orange. And then record the volume of your acid use and then repeat these steps without the indicators now. Okay, because I want to prepare salt, right? The salt and water, the sodium sulfate form must not be contaminated with the indicator. Okay, so I repeat it with the known volume of uh, titration results that you just used and then transfer it to a conical, uh, sorry, transfer it to a evaporating dish. And then inside your evaporating dish, you will only have salt and water, nothing else. So heat the mixture to saturated solution, cool, crystals will form, wash with distilled water, dry on filter paper. These steps are a must to write because usually they will say, pure dry samples of the salt that is to be produced. Okay, so if the salt is soluble but not group 1 and 2, not group 1 and 2, not calcium and below, so example magnesium sulfate or zinc sulfate in this case, your transition method. Okay, the method to pick for this one is in excess, okay, the excess insoluble base or carbonate. Pick the oxide, hydroxide, or the carbonate. Okay, so this is what we are going to do. I add excess zinc oxide because I pick the oxide, hydroxide, carbonate to the acid, and because the zinc oxide is added in excess, all your sulfuric acid is already used up. Okay, so at the end of it, I will have zinc oxide that's in excess plus your zinc sulfate. SO4 plus H2O, right? So these are all inside the beaker now. Filter it, right? Filter it to remove the excess solid. And then I will have this. Then what I do? Crystallization. Heat to saturated solution. Cool crystals will form. Wash and dry. Okay. Keyword, add the excess insoluble base, the oxide, hydroxide or carbonate to the acid until no solid can dissolve, means it is excess, all your acids have been used up. Okay, Filter the mixture, the excess insoluble base or the carbonate will be trapped as residue. Collect the filtrate, the filtrate the fur through will be the salt and water. Heat the filtrate on evaporating dish to saturated solution and then cool it down, crystals will form. Wash with distilled water, dry on filter paper. Okay, and last but not least, if the salt is insoluble salt, under the syllabus we have this five salt, barium calcium lead sulfate, silver lead chloride. Okay, use ionic precipitation. Ionic precipitation, pick the nitrate. Okay, it must be aqueous plus aqueous, give you a solid. Pick the nitrate. Okay, pick the nitrate in two test tubes. Transfer one to the other, you will form a precipitate. Then this precipitate just filter and then I will take the residue. Wash the residue with distilled water, dry on filter paper. 
okay whenever you pick an equals plus a plus always pick the nitrate because all nitrates are soluble okay the insoluble salt will form as precipitate filter to retain the residue wash and dry okay why are these methods chosen titration give the purest u with the highest u purer salt with the highest u as it is the most accurate Right. Also, you must use titration. If I choose two aqueous solution, right? If I choose two aqueous solution as your starting material, in this case, I choose the acid alkali. Titration is the only method with endpoint. Right, I, it's the only method you can do to know that you added the right amount of acid and alkali so that neutralization will occur. Okay, excess insoluble substance, right? Why? I why I use this method? So now this one is an insoluble substance. I cannot choose titration anymore. Right, I cannot put it in a pipette or a burette. So in the lab it's more straightforward, right? I just put it in a beaker, pour in the acid. Okay, this excess method, please never pick the metals, all right? Because metals can be very reactive or non-reactive. Okay, and then last but not least, your ionic precipitation. Why do I choose ionic precipitation? Because this salt is insoluble, I cannot pick the excess method as it will coat a layer around the region and stopping the reaction.